there everyone. Today I'm going to make a homemade apple pie. This was the type of pie that my mom was known for in our family with all the relatives. Everyone called her pie, her apple pies, Pearl's apple pie. So she was really well known for her pies in general, but her apple pie was her best of all. So today I'm going to show you how I make my homemade apple pie. Um, my crust is from Betty Crocker. That's where I get my crust, but my techniques are from my mom. So I'm going to use a Granny Smith because this is typically the traditional apple that's used in apple pies because it's a tart apple, but yet it comes out just perfect in a pie. So this is the end result. It turned out really good. It's still cooling. It's warm. It's not hot. And I can't wait to cut it open and show you and take a bite. So I hope you'll enjoy it. I had mentioned to you that I've had my Betty Crocker cookbook since 1977. I just kind of wanted to let you see the wear and tear that I've gotten on it after all these years. So a lot of my recipes I, I have gotten from this cookbook for many years. So a lot of the recipes that I've had for all these years I've gotten from this. So today like, I want to show you my pie page. This has gotten more wear than any page or pages in this book because I have made so many pies through the years and it's inevitable after 45 years that you're, or, you know, before 45 years, you're going to have some wear and tear on your book. You know, maybe something spilled on it or whatever. I was very young when I received this. So I just wanted to show that to you. So my pie pages about, you know, how to make a standard pastry, a, a 10 inch, an 8 inch, a one crust, a baked, blind baked. So this has always been my to-go-to recipe book, and I just want you to see this. My longtime recipe for a two-crust, eight or nine-inch pie crust, a two-top, two-crust pie, is two cups of flour. But if you watched my other pie crust tutorial, um, you'll know that I've learned through many years my tricks and my own personal tips of making my pie crust. So. I'm not going to put two cups of flour. I'm going to put like one and three quarters of a cup in my bowl. And the reason I do that is because it's easier to work with it. Where if I put the amount it asks where it's real dry and I'm, I have my own techniques. Like I said, I've been baking pies for way over 40 years since I was in high school. So now this recipe calls for two thirds a cup of shortening um, or lard or whatever you're using. And last maybe 15 years I've been using uh, butter. So it calls for two thirds a cup. And this is the easiest way I find to do it because it, it, there's a measurement on the butter. So I just cut uh, one third on each uh, stick of butter. And then it calls for um, uh, four to five tablespoons of water. And I always go with the fifth tablespoon because it just works better for me where I, I always seem to need the extra amount of water. So instead of starting with four, I just automatically go to five tablespoons of uh, water. And then the butter is at room temp and I just kind of cut them in small pieces. I don't use cold butter and like I never have because my Betty Crocker pie crust recipe actually called for shortening and I used to bake all the time with shortening. Uh, but I've switched to butter and this is just room temperature like as if I was using shortening. So it works for me. Um, so then I'm going to add my five tablespoons of water. And now I use my uh, dough hook to mix everything together. Here's our dough hook. Just lower it and start mixing. You're going to want to have your pie plate right near you where you're going to do the dough. So when I didn't put the full amount of flour in, it was very intentional because I'm going to make up the rest of it when I do the dough because it's now it's pliable and easy to work with. So you're going to flour your surface first and I'm going to take a portion of this dough um, 
the the smaller amount will go on the bottom of the pie crust so um, what I'm gonna do is make my dough kind of roundish just kind of like this and then we're gonna start rolling it out so this is like I said where we make up the dough, I, I mean, excuse me, where we make up the flour that we didn't initially put in. Because it's so much easier to work with. And like I've learned through many, many years of the little details that, that really matter when you're making pie. So this is what you want. And then what you're gonna do is I kind of fold it like this. I put my pie plate here and I just put it in. and. Now I'm going to uh, form this around. I'm going to cut the edges because I am. I'm not going to have a like a ruffled crust around it until after I put the top crust on. So um, now we're going to get the apples ready. Here's our bottom crust. So what I do is I cover up my dough while I'm preparing the apples that I'm going to wash first, then I'm going to peel and core, and then I'm going to slice them up. So this is my regular apple core. It's real simple. It doesn't peel the apples. It just punches it out like this. And that's so simple. I prefer this. And then I can peel these or I mean, excuse me, I can cut them any size I want. So I get a knife and I kind of just cut these in pieces right about like this. I don't want my apple pie mushy. And so if I were to use those really thin pieces, it's going to be mushy. So I like my apple pie to, to have the apples soft, but not mushy. So this is about how I... I do my apples right about like this right right about an inch to a half an inch to an inch in size this is about uh, five large apples that I used and now we want to measure approximately six cups so this is an eight cup measuring cup and this is exactly six cups of apples is what we want close to and then you're gonna have your flour you're going to have cinnamon and sugar. And so this particular recipe that has an eight or nine inch crust apple pie is um, a fourth a cup of all purpose flour, three quarters a cup of sugar, and it's a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, I normally don't measure when I'm doing this, but because I'm showing you, I want to make sure I give you the, the amounts if you haven't done this before. But when I do my pies, I really don't measure I just kind of guesstimate because I've been doing this so long so once you mix your flour your sugar and your cinnamon together uh, nutmeg is an option but for apple pies I, I don't use nutmeg I love nutmeg but I just don't use it for my apple pies so now what we're going to do is kind of fold all this in and we're going to mix this all together and then what we're going to do is fill our one crust pie with this. And after we do that, we're going to put little, like a tablespoon to two tablespoons of butter cut up and spread it all around. And then we're going to do our top crust. So that's our last part. So what I do is I start, I put, you know, like half the apples in and then I dot some butter just randomly like this. And then I add the rest of the apples. And you can see it has all of it, everything in it. It's cinnamon, flour, sugar. Now, there aren't any other pies that I make that I fill up like this. You actually, some people put even more apples where it's taller. I think this is right about right. I really don't want more than what I have here. 
But any other pie like peach or apricot or anything, you don't want that much fruit in it because it would just not be good. It would be real runny because peaches have a lot more juice in them than apples. So this is about how you want it. I don't top it anymore. So now we're gonna do our top crust. So now you wanna unwrap your dough and you had it covered so it didn't dry out. So you could do your apples. And now we're going to uh, flour our board again and do our top crust. Just the same way we did the bottom crust. The only difference is that this is gonna be bigger than the bottom crust because it's going to have the ruffled crust edges that the bottom crust doesn't have. So I have learned to kind of start with a little less than half of the original dough that we have. And this is still the dough that we didn't put the full amount of flour in, but I did add the leftover dough from the bottom crust to this uh, dough. And it's critical when you're making a two crust pie that while you're preparing your fresh fruit that you, that you keep your... Um, dough covered so it doesn't dry out because it will dry out if it's not covered so you just want to make sure that you have uh, plenty of flour while you're rolling this so it doesn't stick and we're still going for the same like kind of a round oval shape and you want it just kind of a medium they say about an eighth of an inch thick but of course I never measure my dough this is about right. After a while, you'll just learn what thickness to do. And you have to have your pie close by so you can maneuver it to cover it, just like this. So you can see this is quite a large crust. And what I do in the beginning is I take my thumb, and I before I use the fork, I kind of go around it like this, just to kind of keep it um, pressed against so it doesn't flip-flop. So I first use my thumb and go around the edges just like this. And then I get a fork after I have it kind of stabilized. And um, I use the fork and go all the way around the edges. Just like this. Okay. And now I'm going to get a knife. I like kind of a nice thick crust, but I don't want this much of it. So I go with a, a fairly sharp knife and I go around the edges, right? And I give myself about, probably about an inch of dough around the edges for my um, crust. Right about like that. And once I reach the end of where I started, then I'm going to make my um, outer crust, my little design. So the next step is I take the edges just like this and I kind of roll them under all the way around the pie. I roll them around, I mean under, just like this, all the way around. And after I'm done rolling the edges under, then I'm gonna do my little pinching technique. And like my mom had her own way and I've kind of followed suit. I have a sister Susie who does hers a little different. Like some people use their finger. I just pinch it just like this. To me, it's easier. It kind of holds it together better. And it was a way I was taught. I used to, sit next to my mom when she baked and watched every move she made. And that's how I learned how to make pies. Um, my mom was a huge pie maker and I haven't shown too many pies on my uh, channel, but I'm like a pretty big pie maker. I love making pies. I've been doing it for years. So now what we're gonna do is do an egg wash. When I was growing up, my mother used evaporated milk and she used a little pastry brush and then she put sugar and cinnamon on top. But through the years, I've done an egg wash because it doesn't burn as easily as uh, milk. Your oven should be preheated to 425. And then what you're gonna do, um, I use the whole egg. I don't wanna waste it. So instead of using just the egg white, I've learned to just use the whole egg. 
So I put maybe an eighth a teaspoon of water in here, and I just beat the whole egg, just like this. I get a pastry brush, and I just start brushing the top, uh, as well as the edges of the crust, too. That's what you want to do. And you don't want to put, you don't want it to be too soggy, so you're not going to, like, put this whole egg on. You're just going to kind of brush over it and um, kind of moderately. So, and then what I'm going to do, I do have a pie shield that I purchased a while back to, to put over the pie so it doesn't burn. But the last couple of times I've made a pie and used it, it hasn't really prevented it from getting too dark. So now I'm gonna do the, the old traditional way that I've done all these years and I'm going to just use foil because the pie shield is kind of a loose fitting um, gadget. I mean it, it works sometimes but it just depends. Um, sometimes it doesn't work and I just don't want this to burn. So that's about how much egg wash you want on it where it's kind of moderately put on. And then we're going to get some sugar and cinnamon and you're going to mix it together just kind of about this color where it's not too cinnamony, just kind of about like this. And we're just going to sprinkle it on the top, not on the edge of the crust, but just all over the top. And after that, we're going to do our little slits so that it has some ventilation in the pot. So. This is about how you want it, just how I've done it here. I would never do an apple pie without doing this final touch because it's really awesome. So, and any leftover dough that I have, which I do have some right here, I make little cookies. This was my mother's tradition. She always used the leftover dough and she rolled it out and made little cookies and put sugar and cinnamon on it. That is very, very traditional in my family. So here's our slits, and now I'm going to put some foil all around the edges. And you can use leftover foil from something else you've used it for, and just wrap it around the edges. And this will prevent your pie from burning, your crust. So just go all the way around the edge and I do need another little piece. So now we're going to put this in our oven for 40 to 50 minutes. You, you check it and you'll put a knife in to see if the apples are cooked enough. So there it goes on the middle rack at 425 degrees for 40 to 50 minutes and we'll start at 40. So this has been baking 40 minutes so I'm sticking a knife in and the apples are just right. They're not hard and it's done. 40 minutes is all it took. Here it is. We have apple pie a la mode and it looks fantastic. So let's give it a try. It is fantastic. It's got that wonderful mild tart flavor of the apples. It's super delicious. If you're looking to make a nice dessert for Easter or for any holiday, apple pie, you can never go wrong with it. So I hope you give this a try and I hope it turns out wonderful for you.